In this video, we will get a high level understanding of runtime fabric architecture. Now, before you begin with this video series, please ensure that you are aware of Docker and Kubernetes basics. If not, please consider watching the RTF primer series, which is a prerequisite for this series. Link in the description below. Without the basics of Kubernetes and Docker, you will not be able to get a sound understanding of all the components that run under the hood of Q Runtime Fabric. With this in mind, let's get started. So why do we need Runtime Fabric? You might be aware of these two deployment models. In Cloud Hub, the Control Plane and the Runtime Plane, both are in MuleSoft's Managed Cloud. As an organization, I would not like to host my business data on MuleSoft's managed cloud. I would rather want to have complete ownership of my business data, which means it should not leave my systems. For such requirements, CloudHub doesn't work. Also, CloudHub allows one Mule application per worker, which is good, but spinning up a new worker which basically is a virtual machine and then deploying application can sometimes become time consuming, right? So these are the two drawbacks or limitations of Cloud Hub. So for that, we have hybrid. In hybrid, the control plane is in MuleSoft's managed cloud and it only stores the metadata and the runtime plane which has the real business data flowing through it is on customers premises. So in that case, we have, we can have a runtime deployed to customers on premise system. So on one single runtime, there is possibility to deploy multiple applications. So, since you can deploy multiple application on one single runtime, it means that the application can start up quickly because there's no overhead of creating a VM and then getting the runtime and then finally deploying the application. So the two limitations, which was data ownership and the time to start spin up a new application have been overcome in the hybrid model. But one limitation with hybrid model is that since the runtime is common and we can have multiple apps hosted on single runtime. So imagine a scenario wherein we have 100 apps hosted on a single mule runtime and out of those 100 app, one app is causing problem. It is a bad application or it is having some memory leaks. So that one app has the ability to bring the whole runtime down, which in turn can bring the remaining 99 apps down, which is a serious issue. So we want isolation. So isolation is there in cloud up, but not in hybrid. Hybrid gave us the ability to overcome the two limitations, but it still doesn't have the isolation. So basically what we want to achieve is best of both worlds. We want the isolation that cloud up provides and we want the speed of deployment and the data ownership that hybrid provides. So for that reasons, we need a new deployment model, which is runtime fabric. Now, if we observe this diagram carefully, we can say that runtime fabric is an improved or extended version of the hybrid deployment model, which allows us to achieve isolation by deploying one mule app per runtime. And how is this isolation achieved? It's achieved by using Docker and Kubernetes. So now we have best of both worlds the isolation that cloud hub was providing that has been attained by docker and kubernetes we just have one mule app per runtime and the benefit of having this is that now a bad application cannot bring the whole runtime down because that mule runtime is inside a docker container and our app is deployed on that runtime so in case 
if one app is bad only that particular pod or the container will go down other remains as is and other benefit of this isolation is that we can have one app running on mule version 3 and we can have another mule app running on mule version 4 so we can have multiple versions of mule running which is not possible in hybrid in hybrid if the mule server is created on mule version 4.3 all apps should have 4.3 version only only in that case it will work any mule 3 app cannot work on uh, a hybrid runtime a hybrid deployment model where the runtime is having version 4.3 so that's yet another benefit and we have all the benefits of the hybrid model wherein our business data remains completely under our control it's not going to the control plane the only thing that goes to the control plane is the metadata related to the runtime so rtf is available in different flavors let's understand those so the first is appliance then we have byok bring your own kubernetes and the latest offering is byoos which is bring your own red hat openshift let's try to understand this now when the offering is an appliance offering right so in that case you don't have to provide a kubernetes cluster all you need to provide is the infrastructure to hold that kubernetes cluster so basically you have to provision a virtual machine along with all the necessary required space so you assign a vm with attached drives in it that's all mulesoft will automatically install kubernetes and on top of it it will deploy its rtf agents so that's the appliance model so you basically just give them the infrastructure they will give you an appliance and you install it so that appliance gets everything ready for you so that's the appliance model the other one is bring your own kubernetes so it's quite clear from the name that you have to give bring your kubernetes so you in case if you are already having a kubernetes cluster just give it to mulesoft they'll install their runtime fabric agent and then uh, the deployment of app can take place so this is in case if you already have an existing kubernetes cluster you can just give it and uh, the agent can be installed on it and the newest offering is byoos which is bring your own red hat openshift so in this case if you are working on red hat openshift now it could be on uh, red hat's own cloud it could be on uh, aws or azure right so red hat openshift is a different uh, container platform in case if it is then you can leverage that option now byok also has multiple options available so it could be azure kubernetes service gke eks digital ocean kubernetes service so pretty much if you have any kubernetes cluster rtf can be deployed by using the bring your own kubernetes uh, deployment option now let's understand the rtf architecture here i have divided the architecture in two layers the lower one is the layer that is provisioned by kubernetes basically it represents the default components that come with a kubernetes cluster the upper layer has the components that are developed and deployed by mulesoft to the kubernetes cluster now both of this layer are part of the same kubernetes cluster it's just that the components of the lower layer come from kubernetes and the components of the upper layer come from mulesoft so let's understand each of this layer in detail so the kubernetes layer will basically have hcd cube scheduler controller manager all of this being managed by the cube api server so these components form a part of the kubernetes control plane now there are other components that form the runtime plane and they, those are docker registry which is basically to retrieve images from a private registry docker for containerization and flannel or similar container networking interface now i've just mentioned all of the kubernetes components 
with an assumption that you are already aware of basic Kubernetes architecture. If not, I strongly suggest you to check the video RTF primer on Kubernetes. You can find the link in the top right corner of this video or in the description below. All right, now let's move to the upper layer, which has the components that are developed and deployed by Mule to the Kubernetes cluster. All of the components within this pink box are part of the agent. Earlier, it was called as deployer. The job of this components is to receive requests from any point platform and perform certain actions like start, stop, deploy, etc. Now let's understand each of these components. First is agent. This component basically opens up a TCP connection with the control plane and keeps listening to a queue. Now in the queue, we can receive any deployment related message and this agent will then translate it into Kubernetes resources and make calls to the Kube API server. So basically, this agent is a one point stop for all the communications to the control plane from a Kubernetes cluster. And also the other way around is true that if there is any request coming from the control plane, it is received via the agent. Next is the cluster status. Now the job of this component is to keep track of the overall cluster. For example, if the nodes are up or run, up and running, in case if there is any change, then convey the health details of the control plane, control uh, health details of the to the control plane via the agent. Next up is the cluster IP. Now do not confuse this with the Kubernetes cluster IP service. This basically serves requests by Mule runtimes for IP address of peers and also enables Hazelcast with multicast network, which is required for peer discovery. This is useful when you deploy scheduler based applications and scale them across more than one replica. So in such cases, you would want to enable clustering among the runtimes so that the scheduler runs only on one of the API and not on all of them. And to achieve this, they need to the runtimes need to be aware of each other. And this is attained by the cluster IP. Next is the AnyPoint monitoring. This component is responsible for sending runtime related metrics to the AnyPoint platform control plane. Unlike other components that we discussed so far, which are mostly pods, the monitoring component is a container which gets deployed per Mule application behaving as a sidecar. Next up is the resource cache. Whenever you want to deploy a Mule app, it's first uploaded to Exchange and then RTF pulls the jar from the Exchange. Now, if there are multiple replicas of the app to be deployed or redeploying the app in case of crash, reaching out to the exchange every time to download the jar would consume bandwidth and time. Hence, the resource cache stores the jar and related config in the cluster to avoid round trips to the exchange. Now, this cache can store up to 10 GB of data and the duration is one year. Finally, we have the ingress. The component depends upon the flavor of RTF you are using. If it is BYOK RTF, then you need to configure and deploy, deploy your own implementation of Ingress. But in case of appliance, MuleSoft ships its own homegrown HTTP proxy. This Ingress is used to expose Mule apps to the external world. By the external world, I mean anything outside the Kubernetes cluster. Now, this HTTP proxy was also known as Edge, which basically is a layer 7 load balancer that receives inbound traffic, performs TLS termination, and then forwards the traffic on a new TCP connection to the backend Mule application. It was also known as Edge 443, and finally, today we call it as Ingress, which is in line to the Kubernetes terminology. So those were the components of agent. Now that we have agent and Kubernetes components in place, we can deploy our Mule application on top of it. So basically we have multiple layers now on Runtime Fabric, the Kubernetes, the agent, and finally the Mule apps. And of course this Mule apps can be 
controlled from the AnyPoint platform. Now this AnyPoint platform, for obvious reason, it's outside the Kubernetes cluster. I'll just, it's overlapping because I didn't have space, but it's outside the Kubernetes cluster. And from here, you can basically deploy app, make changes to it, and everything can be done with the help of this agent. All right. So the view that you're having right now is from the BYOK flavor, bring your own Kubernetes. Had this been appliance, there would have been additional components. So let's look at those additional component. So now we have Kubernetes supporting services and the ops tools. So there is a component called as gravity, which comes when you get the appliance model of runtime fabric and gravity installs all of these additional components so it has dns which is to convert the ip into some domain name by default kubernetes also provides this dns cube dns pods and that can manage but gravity also has its own then you have gravity site now gravity site and ops tool work together. So basically in the appliance model, you have something called as ops center, wherein you can see the status of the Kubernetes cluster, the memory utilization, CPU utilization, and all of the metrics, as well as the logs. So ops tool and gravity site basically give you a UI or where you can check all these details. Similarly, logging. So if you have to push the logging to that UI, there's a component given by gravity and the Helm Tiller. Helm Tiller is for the Kubernetes manifests. So all of the supporting services come as part of gravity. So when you are talking about the RTF appliance, there is a component called gravity and the, that component does the job of setting up the Kubernetes cluster. So basically, gravity and closes all of this inside a planet container so the planet container is a root container a big container wherein uh, the kubernetes components will be deployed the agent will be deployed and then you can deploy a mule application but if it is byok you don't have gravity it's just the kubernetes components and the agent but since it's appliance in case of appliance you as a customer has to provide only the infrastructure kubernetes and everything will be installed by mulesoft so mulesoft uses gravity and on top of gravity mulesoft has made some modification with help of which they can install their agent the Gra kubernetes component and eventually we get a runtime fabric so that's all about the architecture of runtime fabric. I hope this would video might have helped you in understanding the different flavors of runtime fabric. Basically, the two important things, how BYOK is completely different than the appliance model and a high level view of the runtime fabric architecture. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.